What is going on everybody? Welcome to a Django tutorial series. Django is a web framework for Python. All the framework is is just a foundation, a set of tools for you to build on top of, in this case, to make a website. One of the first questions that people are going to ask when they start looking into web development with Python, they're going to find that there's like 20 frameworks for Python. Which one do I choose? For the most part, you've got high level and low level frameworks. Django is the highest level framework and the rest are pretty low level frameworks. Uh, so we would compare Django to something like Flask. Okay, so we've got a Flask tutorial series on pythonprogramming.net as well. And the main difference between these two is with, with Flask, Flask allows you a lot of freedom to create things your way, to do them in a custom manner exactly however you want. Django, on the other hand, forces you to do things the Django way. The trade-off here is under Flask, you can do things your way, but your way is almost certainly not the best way. And with Django, the Django way is almost certainly the best way. And if you make an, a whole, an entire website always doing the Django way, overall, you're going to have one out, most likely. Because honestly, if you're being honest with yourself, you are bad at creating systems. Even the extremely talented uh, girls and guys at Django couldn't get it right the first time. It's taken thousands of web developers and de just developers in general and millions of end users using the Django framework to get it where it is today. And it's, act it's still under active development, very active development. So using something like Django is very tested. It's going to scale it's going to be secure and it's going to be efficient. And, um, and by scale, I really mean two things. One, you know, a website scaling, that's really, that's a lot, that has to do with some, <clears throat> some backend things a little bit more. But by scale, I usually mean, uh, you know, most people, they refer to scale as in how many users can it hold? Like, can it, can it go from having 5,000 users to 5 million users? But actually, when a project scales, in my mind, it's, it's when the actual project itself scales, uh, where you add a bunch of new things and features and stuff like that. And what ends up happening is this, I like to show this picture. It's one of my favorite pictures. It's, you know, you start with a clean slate and you build this beautiful house and everything's working out really well. Maybe you add a porch to it and it's cool. And then you start adding other little things. And before you know it, you've made a huge mess, <laughs> okay? So um, with Django, it starts you out right out of the gate with something like this, where you've got your main website and your project and you start to build out into what are called apps. The premise with Django is that every website is really just a, a combination of certain apps. So in this case, you might have some apps. One might be a forum, another one might be a blog, and another one might be a store, okay? And these are all contained on the same website. So the terminology can get really confusing really fast, uh, especially with something like Django, which is very high level, very abstracted, and it can get just be too much sometimes and a little bit overwhelming. So I wouldn't confuse, I wouldn't focus too much on the terminology. But basically, you know, you might hear that a web app. A lot of times, people consider a web app to be a web page, or a, a, let's say a phone app to be like the whole thing, not to have sub apps, right? <laughs> but with Django, basically, your whole website has these little sub apps, basically, and each app actually could be a standalone website, right? You might have just a store, you might have just a blog, or it might just be a forum or something like that. As time goes on, we'll build out this uh, kind of diagram so you can better see what's going on. But at the basic level, that's what it is. So um, so the beauty of using Django is that it, it, it can grow um, in a way that requires foresight that you probably just don't have when you're initially setting out for a project. But with Django, they basically give you that foresight using this certain paradigm that they're kind of forcing on you, but it's probably a good choice. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and get Django. This is super challenging. Not really. All you have to do is um, just do pip install Django. One thing to note is I'm on a Windows operating system. Uh, it doesn't matter what operating system you're using here. So the all of the code, all of Django, the back end, the development server, everything will be the same no matter what your operating system is. Django is uh, blind to the operating system basically. It just doesn't care. So everything's the same no matter what your operating system is. Use whatever you want. Um, same goes for the editor. Use whatever editor you want. I don't care. Uh, pip install Django. For this tutorial, I'm using Django 1.9. 
if you do pip install Django, uh, you'll get the latest version, whatever that happens to be. I just recommend you do that. But if for whatever reason you want to make sure you're using the same version as me, you can do a double equals there uh, and say the version basically 1.9. Once you've done that, you have Django and you're ready to rumble. So uh, we'll move this over. Obviously, you have to hit enter here, but I already have it. So um, we'll move that over. Uh, this is the Django website. You can come here. You can, if you're having some problems installing it, you can come to download and read some more information there. Pip install really should work. Um, one more thing to note is I'm going to be using Python 3. So like, let's say you're on Linux, you use pip install. That's probably going to install for Python 2.7. Um, we're going to use 3, so pip 3. If you don't have pip 3, apt get pip 3, okay? Uh, so, uh, let's move this over. If you're on Windows, don't worry about pip3 and all that. Uh, moving this over, now what we're going to do is create our like project directory. So, I'm just going to make a new one. So, I'm right-clicking here, new folder. And I'm just going to call this Django Tutorials. Just make sure you don't just call this directory Django or some other conflicting path name. Call it something very specific so it doesn't conflict with another Python package. Now, I'm going to open up my terminal here. Um, in Windows, you can hold Shift, right-click, and open a command window there. I'm not really sure if you can do something similar on other operating systems, so keep that in mind. Now, once you're there, uh, what we're going to do is Django-admin, start project. And you can call your project whatever you want. Generally, the standard people use is my site. So I'll hit Enter on my site, and boom, the project is created. We can go ahead and open this up, bring this down, and here it is. So if we look in here, we'll see that my site just contains another directory called my site. This is just a container. It really doesn't matter what you call this. You can call that whatever you want. This needs to stay the same because it's in your settings now. Uh, so we've got my site. This is going to be the main kind of hub of your website. So this my site directory is the equivalent of that website project in black text there. That's your my site directory. So over here, we've got a manage.py. We can bring that up. And you'll see that it's just some simple stuff here. Um, this is basically your command line tool. We'll be using manage.py quite a bit. You won't actually be reading manage.py very often. Um, but uh, that's what it looks like. Anyway, uh, within your my site directory, you've got init, settings, URLs, and WSGI. Init just tells Python this is to be treated like a package. Um, if you've watched my Flash tutorial series, we actually put the entire website in the init.py file. That's not going to fly with Django. It's not going to put up with that junk. You're going to have to do things the right way, the Django way here. So, so that you'll just leave that blank. You won't even touch that. This is settings. This is the settings for your website. Again, this is the main hub. Um, we'll, we'll talk more and probably hit up the settings file a lot more as we get into the more advanced. Installed apps is probably the most important thing. Well, it's not the most important thing, but it, it's one of the most important things that you'll have to remember. Every time you add an application, you have to manually add it here. So if you download, like like what Django lends itself for people to use and share each other's applications, if you download someone else's application, you have to add it in here. You have to install it. I'll show you guys how to do that. It's really simple. Uh, probably the most important thing here is actually this line. This is a secret key. Hence, secret. Keep it secret. Don't share it. If you put your website up on GitHub, something like that, do not put this here. This would, is used for encryption, basically where things like uh, your session, stuff like that. If someone has access to this key, they can decrypt, decrypt the session, claim themselves as an admin, re-encrypt, and they will be treated like an admin on your website. So don't do that. So um, Otherwise, this other stuff will kind of get to each little part of this uh, as we go on. But for the most part, as you're getting started, the main thing is going to be right here. So closing out of this, we're pretty much done with settings now. URLs, this is the main kind of controller of your website. Right now, we just have one URL pattern. The URL patterns are regular expressions. Uh, if you're not familiar with regular expressions, I highly suggest you at least get somewhat familiar. Um, but at least to start, you won't need to know very much. Caret, this caret just means the beginning of a string. And the other one that you'll see fairly often is a dollar sign. That's the end of a string. Everything else remains the same. So basically, this URL pattern just basically says, and all these URL patterns start after the initial domain name. Okay. Um, if that all sounds like gibberish to you, don't worry. There's a lot to swallow with Django. And just take it very slow and ask questions, right? So if you have any questions along the way, just ask them under the video. You can go to the pythonprogramming.net community, ask them there, whatever. You can go to Stack Overflow, Reddit, 
all this stuff. Ask questions. I'll at least answer whatever I can. Anyway, this is that file. Uh, I'm not really sure why it's telling me I've modified something. I don't think I've modified anything, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. Anyway, that's your URLs. Basically, this file will just point to your apps. Okay, so this file is underneath that main website project, and it points to the various apps. And as time goes on, you'll see that the apps themselves have their own URLs.py file. So that can get kind of confusing, but at least that was very confusing to me. Uh, you all are probably much smarter than I was. <laughs> so anyway, um, back up to our uh, command line, terminal, whatever. Uh, we're now going to interact with that manage.py file. We're currently in Django-Tutorials, so we need to uh, change directory into my site. So cd my site. And now we can interact with manage.py. Now, I have many versions of Python installed on my machine, so I have to explicitly say which version of Python I want to use, even the subversion. So for you, if you're on like Mac or Linux, you could probably say Python 3. Okay, that's not going to work with me. I can say Python, but that corresponds to Python 2.7, so I don't want that either. So I'm going to explicitly say Python where it is. Chances are if you just have one version of Python installed on your machine, you can either just do Python or if you're on like Linux, Python 3. Okay, but I give the full path. C colon slash Python 35 Python, so that's the full path of Python for me. Then we say manage.py, and for now, we are going to do what's called run server. Go ahead and do that, hit enter, and you may see this, well, you absolutely will see, you have unapplied migrations, okay? Don't worry about that. Migrations, basically, every time you add new models, I suppose, you will need to do uh, make migrations and migrate. We will talk about that later. Feel free to run it. Uh, you will notice that it actually tells you exactly what you need to do to fix this little error. It says run python manage.py migrate to apply them. So the errors and stuff that you're going to see here are <laughs> super helpful errors. Um, so go head over to your browser and go to the following URL. It's this 127.001 colon 8000. Basically, 127.001 is just local host, so that's your local IP. So this is obviously not accessible outside of your home network. And actually, well, if you put the computer's local IP, as far as I know, the local IP will correspond, but don't worry about that. Anyway, 127.001 colon 8000. Basically, this is on port 8000. Um, so this is your development server. So Django comes shipped with this awesome development server. Basically over here, you're running the server and you can see all the requests. So you can actually see here, we made a request to, um, to hear uh, the responses at 200, uh, which is just successful. And then we did not get a fave icon. Uh, so that was is returning a 404 for us. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, you may or may not be even seeing that. I'm not really sure why I'm seeing that 404 to be quite honest. Anyway, shouldn't have one, but maybe there's like a cache or something. Anyway, uh, so you should see a page that looks like this. If you don't see a page that looks like this, something went wrong. You should have an error here and read the error, see what it says. They are very useful errors. Otherwise, uh, it should look just like this. If you have any problems, feel free again to post them below. Once you get to this point, you're ready to move on to the next tutorial. The next tutorial will actually start working on making something useful show up here rather than the you know kind of default message. Uh, so anyways, stay tuned to the next tutorial, questions, comments below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching.